Yeah, so we thank you very much for uh, the invitation to speak here. So actually, I realized last night that uh, so last year, almost to this day, there was a conference here in uh, Frankfurt. And um, so unfortunately, I gave a title to almost the same very uh, no, I gave a talk to almost the same very title. And then I, I remember that I said that was in Venus 30, that if I come back, I will go from Venus 60. Uh, so now I'm here to uh, fulfill this promise. So maybe next time I do Venus 19 and can do loop, loop uh, leaps of three. Uh, <laughs> so of course, I do a totally different crowd. There were also a few people, so I don't assume that uh, you uh, you attended that. So the, the question is uh, very, very big. And is uh, what is the codile dimension of NG? Or the bi-rational nature of the moduli space of curves. And the history here starts with the uh, theory. Uh, proof that uh, MG is uh, unirational or unity at most 10. Nineteen fifteen, not uh, nine years ago. Uh, then uh, this is a fairly simple proof, which may probably most of you have, have an idea how it goes. Uh, and then if you actually conjecture that all are irrational, and uh, this conjecture was in belief for something like seventy years. Um, uh, yeah, almost seventy years. And then uh, in the eighties, there was a bunch of results of the various people, Cernesi. Uh, and then uh, Chan and Ram, and extended this to get up 11, 12, and 13. And these are really much more difficult proofs. Uh, so, this approach of today does not uh, work anymore. Um, and uh, you can continue in this direction. And then there is a very interesting paper of Vera, Sandro Vera. And this is from around 2005, maybe, who actually proved that M14 is irrational. So this paper I can recommend. So the so for instance, it has a, a a couple of desirable futures compared to others, for it to be correct. And uh, <laughs> it's also a very logical proof. So, any proof of unirationality is uh, constructed by its nature. You have to produce a parametrization of the space, and uh, that's very nicely. And in fact, this approach also recovers the cases of uh, uncertainty. And this has been also reinterpreted in this proof several times. So, it's, it's a very uh, good piece of. Mathematics. Then, uh, then there is uh, Bruno and Vera. They uh, show they try to extend this, and a couple of years later, they show that empty field is rationally connected. We can then use rationality, but still, you know, any two points can be joined uh, by a rational curve. Uh, and you know, to so summarize all these uh, uh, proofs, yeah. So actually, here there is—I I should say now, I'm doing this survey. There is a, an approach by Schneier, and this is about 2015, uh, who actually proved the, you know, uh, outwardly more modest result. MPT is junior wood, but it's a totally different approach, and this is via native factorization. But it's a, a very nice circle of ideas that is brought into this field. And to summarize, that, so you any irrational results, okay. Uh, uh, Mumford uh, writes this in one of his famous papers that irrationality means that I can write down, I, I can see every curve. Yeah. And uh, you would like to implement this. And there are, in fact, uh, algorithms. Uh, uh, in Macaulay or in other computer algebra packages by by, by Frank Schreier, who actually, given uh, the finite field, produces the generic 
third of minus g. Minus g greater than 14 third uh, over that again. Using these constructions. So this is really very an ideal state of affairs somehow. But then you know that uh, this is the positive side of the story. Uh, there is, a, of course, there is a, a famous negative result uh, due to uh, Hans Mumford and Eisenbach. In the 80s, in the, in the really very important papers in Google like theory, who actually proved that. Uh, this group in a maximal sense to read this conjecture and so that MD general type for genus is 24. Uh, yeah. And uh, okay, so then this was the, uh, the, 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 the situation for a long time, and then a couple of years ago, together with uh, uh, Jensen and Payne. We show that in 22 and 23. Okay. Uh, you know, combination of geometric and tropical maps. So this is the situation uh, about uh, the collar dimension of MG. Of course, this is of Harris Mammon either, but open the way to. Lots of similar results for other mobilized spaces, like for like linear varieties, for like KV services, for like point curves, and so on. A billion differentials, right? So, uh, but this is somehow the original one. All right. So uh, there is also a parallel story on this uh, on the on the prime space, right? So maybe I don't want to go into these details, but you can have a parallel story on the mobilized space R D, which is the mobilized space uh, N D. Of the classifying set of B to two, and this is a mobilized space parameterizing unramified double covers having a base genus G curve, and there is a, 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 a part, you know, and you can make a, a similar story. Okay, so now Okay, so let's try to make some progress to this problem. And uh, so I will discuss the following theorem. That uh, and it says very easy to say. Okay, so that N16 is in the room. So the Kodaira dimension of M screen is negative. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, well, so yeah, you can see the, the history over on the top there somehow. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. No. Uh, so uh, M15 was rationally correct, so this is the highest genus for which uh, such a theorem is known. Uh, the highest genus for which you have the parameterization of the Mobilized space occurs. Well, not that impossible that you would have something like this for 17, but uh, this is uh, the best that we can do right now. So, essentially, the talk is uh, about uh, describing how to do this. And uh, there is a similar story here. So, the methods are uh, not, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have a, a, another theorem <laughs> with the same, I mean, myself and Sandro. Where we have uh, we have this R nine continuum, and well, these are different spaces, but uh, the proofs uh, follow some patterns, and uh, so the, there is a totally different geometry, but uh, essentially, and this is the, the limit in some sense of our method at the moment. And I should say that in this case, nothing is known about 
the dimensional failure of the R10 and R11. So again, these are the modulized spaces of fertile RG, the modulized space of curves, together with the two torsion point in the Kogi loop. Okay, so now uh, to, to to even start discussing this, I have to uh, recall the approach of Ellis, Mumford, and Eisenberg. Thank you. For the Ellis, Mumford, Eisenberg approach. So, well, uh, you have to, uh, in front of the line, imagine, well, so NG is a, has a compactification by stable curves, and you look at the boundary of normalized space, and you look at the boundary divisors, and you have delta q over 2 plus 1 of them, and uh, they correspond to the topological types uh, for curves with one node. So, delta 0 is the closure of the locus of inner musical curves. And uh, for I greater than one, delta I is the closure of the locus of transverse union of three curves of genus of genera, I respectively G minus I meeting transversely at the point. And what they have the generations. And it is typical to denote by small delta their classes. You have the Bosch class, which appeared many times this week, uh, and you have the canonical class of the modulized space of curves, K of N G bar. And this is 13 lambda minus 2 times delta 0 minus 3 times delta 1 minus 2 times delta 2 minus 2 times delta u of 2. So there's a positivity of this class. I think it's a you know, a, a kind of delicate question because it doesn't look tremendously positive. Lambda is positive, but you ask a lot of vanishing at the infinity. And the approach that uh, uh, was basically fine at my mom for uh, 40 years ago, actually, is so to show that MG is not in the mood for its general type longer. It's enough to have to exceed it. In fact, we accept uh, exceed it. In fact, it divides a B. On MG, it's going to be a geometric divisor such that its class, by its class, you can write down in terms of the generators of the Picard. We have something like this A lambda minus sum of BI delta I, and then you have this slope invariant, which is like the slope of a modular form, is the A divided by the minimum of the so the rate and the weight of the form divided by the vanishing at the infinity, and this should be less than the slope of the canonical, which is uh, manifestly uh, 13 halves. And if this is true, if this exists, then you can write your canonical class as a positive combination of lambda plus d plus some non. A negative combination of boundaries. So you have something like this. And the point is now that this identity, so these coefficients here are both positive. So alpha and beta are positive coefficients. And now you use the fact that the class lambda is almost ample on the modulized space of curves. So lambda is p. So it's a sum of ample plus effective, so that you have ample plus effective plus even more effective, so it's ample plus effective. So then that from this it follows that the canonical of MG is uh this, and therefore MG is of the other class. So this is the approach. So any questions about that? So of course, uh, the method works provided you can produce such a divide. And I'm not going to explain how they did this because it doesn't really belong to this talk. Um, but there is a lot of, uh, you know, experiences. Now I should also say something. If you want to prove that something is unirule, you want to prove that something is unirule. Well, you just have to prove that this cannot be done. Yeah. So uh, it's enough to show that. So if. Uh, well, maybe I write on the. OK, 
okay? So to show that energy is unit root, unit root, uh, basically you have to show that, uh, to show that, that there exists no effective divider B on MG of slope less than or equal to 30 minutes. So that any effective divider has slope elements. Well, so why do you, and then of course you couple this, uh, maybe it's not quite obvious, I should say you couple this with the famous theorem of uh, Bousson, uh, Campana, Lumay, and Peter Nell, uh, show who actually show that it's a, that, that means that the canonical, also that means that the canonical class is not pseudo effective. Not a closure of effective divisor on MD. I mean, this is the equivalent. And now you use this theorem and you conclude that MG is effective. Well, I'm going to use this theorem several times today. Yeah, so it doesn't produce uh, 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 the, the non pseudo effectivity of the of the of the uh, canonical bound that doesn't produce an explicit uh, device uh, parameterization, but uh, you apply it here. Okay, so this is how you would like to do it. Uh, so now at this point, uh, right? So this is the, in fact I reformulated the question of Kodaira dimension of MG in terms of uh, dividers and uh, slope of effective curves. And to now move towards genus 16, I have to uh, recall. Uh, so the story will have two parts. So one which is uh, less original and one which is more original. And uh, we will start with the easier one. And I have to recall the uh, parametrization of uh, Bruno uh, and Vera of uh, M15, the rational characters. So this is a very simple argument. And essentially, uh, I will just, uh, you know, if you ever thought seriously about curse of unit 15, uh, then uh, it's one the thing that comes to your mind almost immediately. It's a miracle it works. So, uh, so the, the Bruno Vera parameterization of that. So you start with the curve of the sweet pizza, which has been generated. Now the curve, uh, the generic, the gonality of such a curve is nine G plus P over two. And you look at the real derivative of the W19 of C. So this is the locus of nine fold covers P1. This is one dimensional, and by Riemann Rock theorem. This is the same as W690. Yeah? So, this is the map that sends A to L, which is omega. So, this is one dimension. It's just the real Newton number is one. So there's a one dimensional family of embeddings of your curve in P6 of degree 19, and you cannot do it with degree 8, which is the best. Now, let's look at such an embedding. To take such a uh, embedding in pieces. So if you want to work on this full distance, yeah, and you start now to see on what hypersurfaces this curve will lie. That is, you uh, first of all you ask, okay, how many quadrants? And you compute the dimension of the kernel of the multiplication. This is new well multiplication map. Uh, then L is a uh, C is a generic curve. So then you know from the basic QM that there is no H1 here. So H1 of L squared is zero. So by Riemann law that you can compute that is two times the degree, so two times 19 plus one minus 16. Yeah, so the two times 19 plus one minus 16. 
So in general, the map is going to be subjective. There are four quadrants. But I mean P6, four quadrants define a surface. So I look, the surface is the base locus of the kernel of the multiplication. <laughs> so it's easy to show that you all have, you know, it's clear you have at least four quadrants, but you will have in general exactly four. And you also have to show that for a generic choice, the circle that you get is actually smooth. Can you point out it's minus 15? Thank you. Yeah, the numerology is very important. Yeah. Because in this business, and this is not a joke, it will sound like a joke. There is a lot of, uh, there was a lot of progress made on the assumption that time is one zero. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I wanted you had. But nevertheless, I recovered here very nicely, huh? because 39 minus 50 is 24. Yeah. But thank you. So there are four quadrants. So this will not be the last calculation. So what do you know about the uh, interpretation of four quadrants? Well, this is a canonical size. And so the omega of mass, you know, by the injunction formula, it's over minus seven plus eight and over one canonical set. And this is very good. Those canonical surface. So I'm always looking for canonical surface for the following reason. You can, the point is that the curve will move on the surface. Right? So if you want, what is the simplest way you can construct a, a, a curve in the modelized stack? Well, the simplest way is to take a surface and move the curve in a linear system on that surface. So you write down this sequence here. Like half of one one. Okay. So being canonical, you okay, what is this O C of C? So this is omega of uh, omega of C that this is omega of C, sorry, minus O C of one. Yeah. But this O of one was this uh, residual of the pencil, so this is this pencil. So this will have at least two sections. And if you this has one sector, so in total, this will have actually three sectors. So you have that A0 of O and of C is three. So the dimension of the same thing saying that O and C is two. Which is to say that the curve moves with uh, two degrees of freedom of the circle. And not only that you are able to write down a rational curve through C in moduli. But you're actually able to write a rational surface. So there exists a rational surface. In MCC, to the point C. Yeah. So this is actually more than rational, but actually this leads to an immediate proof of rational connectedness, which I don't want to sketch now. But the point is here that you have here uh, uh, some extra freedom that I want to use. So there is a, a P2, actually. Of, no, there, there is a, sorry, a curve of curves of uh, 2C, which I'm going to use to lift this parametrization to uh, MCT2. And this is a, a model for the boundary device of delta 0 to MCC. Right. Yeah. I have, I have a, a I have a, so I have two. Uh, for rational connecting, so I have two points in curve. And you go to the bound so that the way they do so, this is two curves. And you have here the boundary divided delta of zero and then. <laughs> but now you need a special argument for genus 14, and this is unirational. And now you have this uh, curve here, the, the rational curves. Are you on the yes. So you take one curve that you constructed, <laughs> you take another curve you constructed, and then this being you need root uh, irrational joint lengths. So then it, it's three rational curves, and then it's rational curves. But how do you get the three sections given that there is only one? 
of the first world in Iran. No, there is no H one. So is it a regular circle? Yeah. Oh, okay. it's a it's a complete intersection. So there is work here, right? We have to prove that this is smooth. It's a smooth circle. Yeah. And this is uh, right. And there's always a, a lot of work to prove. The idea looks a bit simple. Sure. I don't know. I haven't tried this part. For me, this was okay. But uh, as I say, I think so. Yeah. That's yeah, a good point. Is the rational curve you get from the surface like free? I mean, is the normal yeah. level pretty positive? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you could also do that. Yeah, yeah. but it's said, but I would say this is still not a uh, sure. uh, So, for instance, this Schreier, uh, uh, you know, methodology for actually right. So, this has not been implemented for to, to write down a computer. Okay, so, but anyway, there is some extra stuff here, right? Uh, and the point now is that I, I don't I don't want to talk about entry case. I want to talk about uh, N16. And uh, the point is now that I look at the boundary divisor on N16. And this is N, uh, 2 to 1 left of N16, comma 2 into delta 0. The delta 0 will be N16. Yeah? The 2 to 1 left, which then contains the curve in two points and identifies the points. But now I have enough room to actually integrate two points in my current position. Actually, it's not my, it's a spare out. Okay. Yeah, so the point here is now that I start with a with a with a two point I start with a two point feature C X Y and M sixteen two. So you can link this to M sixteen the boundary. And well, so look, I I said that you have a one dimensional family of such cancels. And now you have these two points. And uh, for this pencil, you have a pencil with cover, yeah? Degree is my cover. C goes to D1. So degree nine. And I have two points, X and Y. Now, imposing that the points B in the same fiber is a one dimensional condition, then I have a finite number of pencils which map X and Y to the same point, having fixed X and Y. That exists. Finitely many A in W one line, which actually meant I write it like this. You understand A zero A minus X minus Y is non-zero. So they map to the same point. And let's pick one of them. And I construct, I apply now the same strategy for that A. So that means for that, for that L. And now I have my surface. So here's my surface. And here is my curve. And here are two points. And you write down that coma logistic was there. And you, you twist it with uh, the ideal of the two points. And what you can see immediately is that uh, the dimension of the of those of that part of the VIA system that contains the two points is actually a zero of a minus x minus y. Yes. One. If I pick my, my X and Y randomly, this would be zero, yeah? And then there would be just that curve. The curve, the curve. There would be no other curve in the linear system fixing those two points. But if I start with my pencil satisfying this condition, I still have a one dimensional parity of curves passing through those two points. So now I take this pencil, right? And this leaves me, gives me a pencil in gamma one, 
in M15. Actually, I don't want it in M15. I want it in M16. In delta zero. It's in an M15 too, but I push it forward to delta zero, and it is in uh, M16. So this shows that de delta zero is new. So now maybe I should describe I, I should describe our strategy for proving this theorem. So the strategy is the following. So the strategy is the following is to come up exhibit two unirule dividers D1 and D2 on your space and M16. Well, by vectoral curves, gamma one in D one, gamma two in D two. Of course, there are such sweeping; they are in root. But I would like to have something about uh, some positions such that gamma one will intersect the canonical zero. Intersect the gamma one with k is zero. Gamma one intersection D one is relation as low. And then for gamma two, gamma two intersection K and D is negative. And at this moment, you are almost ready to conclude that such a K cannot be simply negative. Therefore, by the books and company theorem, it has to be unirule. But there is an epsilon here, plus an epsilon which I will come to the end. That you have to, to still argue about something, it's epsilon, and then you have the density to be unirule. Okay, so my V. Yeah, my. But this method is not going to do it. So this is really pushing me to the extremity. So the same approach we apply for Argon. It's technically the same. Uh, so, sure, so yes. So now, so this is the strategy. This strategy you can apply in a lot of, you can actually try it in several values, right? Uh, but the best would be just to, <laughs> to take the general point and write down the rest of them, but we are unable to do this. So how about, yeah, so, so what is D1? D1 is there for not, right? So here's the strategy. And now I will continue from here. Yeah. And delta one, D1 is there for not, of course. And gamma one is already on the background. It's a three big curve. So now I have uh, a dilemma. Actually, so I, I already solved the dilemma for me. I mean, do should I do the calculation or should I not? And I decided to do that because otherwise it's silly to say, okay, you compute me. Uh, I will just do the calculations. I don't know how many people will uh, be appreciate it, but let's do it. So let's compute the intersection numbers. It's all about the intersection numbers, right? So uh, computing the intersection numbers is not difficult. It's just an elementary surface geometry. So the intersection of gamma one with delta, with lambda, is a uh, quite a characteristic of the surface. So the surface is two to two complete intersection, yeah, plus d minus one, because lambda is a push forward of the of the of the omega of the relative omega. And this is very mild of the intersection. So let's compute this. So this is equal to a zero and a one two. Now this is actually equal to one. This is then equal to zero. And a two, this being a canonical surface, is the number of a zero of omega. But what you are in p six, so uh, you have seven seconds. So all in all, this is chi is actually equal to a, and it's a plus fourteen twenty two. Okay. Now I want to compute uh, the intersection number with delta, which is delta naught. And by the new the formula, so how do you compute this as a number? It's a calculation that, you know, you take a, a, a vibration, a pencil, how many singular fibers are there? So it's a difference between the oil characteristics of the total thing, 
oiler characteristic of the base and the oiler characteristic of the fiber. So if you work this out, then you get that you C2 of S plus four times G minus this is the And I have to say here that this pencil actually has nine base points, right? Because there are not only these base points are there, but in fact, all the nine points which lie on, on this fiber are so you have to blow up this in nine base points. And the circle that you actually are working on is the blow up of uh, S and these nine base points. Okay, so let's compute this. So how do you compute C2? When you use the Nurta formula, which is 12 times chi of OS, it's E2 of S tilde plus uh, what is it? omega of S squared. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, now it's too, 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 too late to turn back on this. So uh, we have here, I said this is 9, so this is 96. And omega of S, this is a, a, a complete intersection, so that's degree uh, 16, but you blow up uh, 9 points. So 16 minus 9 is 7. Therefore, this is 89. So T2 is 89. And then we do this here. So we have 89 plus uh, 4 times uh, 40, 56. Ah, I made a mistake. So we can discover the mistake. So I'm doing the calculation at 16. In F15, I haven't made any mistakes, but the mistake is that actually you have these two points here that you you, you take the, the, the family of the curve is so this is actually you want to push forward this. I didn't explain it, right? Uh, so you actually want to, to get the curve of genus 16, you look at this curve CT and you identify the two points. Yeah, because this is the curve of genus curve of curve of genus 15, but you want to do in F16. So actually, what I wrote here is that you have to subtract. The self intersection is the two psi classes, psi x squared plus psi y squared. So it's plus psi uh, x squared plus psi y squared. And so this is minus two, minus two. Yeah, because this was the calculation of genus 15, but you go to genus 60, so it's 89 minus 56. 56, sorry. Or, uh, you said 56 earlier. No, no, so the time is so 40 times 4 is 56. 56. Okay. So it's 89 plus 54 is 143. Oh. So, so we have these numbers. And what is the intersection with the canonical? So the intersection with the canonical thirteen lambda minus two delta. So thirteen times twenty-two plus minus two times one forty six zero. So I, I I tried to come up with uh, convincing arguments why it's zero should be a negative one, but I failed. So this calculation is supposed to be correct. Uh, so this has some implications. So this term uh, takes care of the first half of the argument, and it does show that M uh, fifteen is not unique. M sixteen cannot be a general type. Yes. But now we have to continue. You have an effective curve. Yeah. yeah. So you cannot have it ample plus effective because then you intersect it with this. Yeah. And now we start to. So this is what Bruno Evera basically gave us. <laughs> So the second one we have, okay, so we have to come up with some new ideas. So here you need some genuine new ideas how to, to, to you don't have anything, the genus is too high, you don't have too high modules, you have, we need to come up with a new ways of parameterizing curves. And this will be the non abelian real Nurta theory.
So, uh, yes, so now comes uh, uh, the second device. So it's practically clear, I have to come with the C2, and this is you know, it's a non abelian theory. And essentially, for a curve now, so now again, I, I start with the curve of genus G, and I look at the modulized space A, S, U, 2, omega, C, K. So this is a space of uh, semi stable rank 2 <laughs> vector bundle on T of determinant uh, omega and the three scale techniques. So these loads I were introduced famously by Bukai, and uh, they are Lagrangian jealous loads. Of expected dimension 3g minus 3 minus k plus 1 to 2. Uh, so the 3g minus 3 is not that 3g minus 3 that you think. Is the 3g minus 3 coming from uh, the dimension of the modelized space of vector bundles of rank 2 with, the, with canonical determinants? It has nothing to do with the dimension of modelized space of curves. And if the deformation theory of this, this problem, bundles with fixed determinants, uh, is covered by the Mukai Tatum map from C2 of A0 of E into A0 of C2 of C2 of A0 E into A0 of C2 of E. Given my multiplications of sections, and you see that the dimensions of these spaces by Riemann rock, this is 3G minus 3, this is the dimension of the tangent space to the modulized space, and this is obviously k plus 1 to 2. If I have a g of e exactly two sections. And then there is a wonderful theorem of Monterat who proves to prove that uh mu e for, for C generic in every genus. New E is injected. So these low side uh, are going to be on the generic curve uh, due to Monserrat's theorem. What Monserrat didn't do is to establish existence. So the first thing that you have to do is to show that this, uh, this, this, uh, um, you know, sorry. So let's look at the dimension before that. So let's uh, look at the uh, um, this 3g minus g minus k plus 1 to 2. So I take g equals 60, and I take k equals 9, and you get here you know, what is this expected dimension? The virtual dimension in this case is 45 minus tension to 0. So you expect the general curve of genus uh, 16 to have a finite number of such bundles. And actually, the previous case, and this really brings me back to the talk exactly 12 months ago in Frankfurt, was G equals 17, K equals 8. This is a totally different story. And that's also true. It has other implications. Well, that talk, you're also talking to the region. That's right. So now that's, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So the question is now a priori. Uh, so you have this cover of the modelized space, SU. Uh, let's, so I, okay, let me write SU in omega 9. So this is a modular cover. So these are curves together with the vector bundle, where C is of uh, unit 16 and E is in, uh, in the bundle with nine sections. And what I'm saying is that this is potentially a finite, genetically finite cover of M16. And you want to ask us what, what is the degree of this map? This is not zero. Yeah, so we need to get dominant. And uh, uh, we have computed this. And the degree, so this is a theorem, the first theorem here that I have to say is the degree of this map is 11. And um, in the previous case, it was uh, whatever, it was three in the genus 13. So, what I want to say is that the general curve of genus 16, the general curve of genus 16. Eleven. So you have a modular cover of surprisingly low degree, and the plan is to use. 
So I should say now I had a plan to actually exhibit how to compute these degrees, but I will skip this. The point is that this is a determinant calculation for the universal Hecker transformation. So the modular space, as you do omega, is singular. So it's not suitable for intersection theory, but there is a, 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 a P1 bundle over it, and you do uh, calculations, intersection theory calculations on that. And uh, the point is, this is a, a 10 by 10 or 11 by 11 determinant, like 10 by 10 determinant in tautological classes. And well, we just like it, okay, so we compute it. But uh, uh, I do not know a general formula for this uh, cardinal degree of this map in the cases when 3 g minus 3 minus k plus 1 choose 2 is 0, although I would very much like to know. Uh, and the reason is that I cannot, this, you know, actually I only know how to compute one class of determinants, and this is not that one that determines, well, this is not that one. Uh, and it's a very complicated mess of their movie numbers, and I am unable to see structure. And how do you compute 10 by 10 determinants in, in, in no structure or? You just put the, the hundred entries. But it's not one more for C by C, yeah? yeah. So then you need a plan. So, uh, right. So for Jacobi, as all these formulas are simple in the sense that, as it, you know, the determinants are at the end of the data under So, uh, you know, this has the determinants, but a lot of things in mathematics just like the determinants. Okay, so there are these bundles. So how am I going to now? Uh, no, so I do seriously. I don't have a conceptual answer. I do not have a fully conceptual answer even to the previous one, genus certain, uh, where the answer was uh, uh, really astonishing, was free. Actually, we can work. We can interpret in these terms. So uh, genus six and eight, and that the degree there is always one, so that's, which you basically you are also aware. Of. All right. So what is about D2? So the D2 divisor is now the, uh, so I will describe D2, the second divisor D2. Probably, but I don't. So, I mean, uh, to, to, to be able to say something, you have to compact it, I, then I think uh, that's uh, difficult. Probably. I know, so sorry, I do have actually something. There's another problem here of L16, which is the word, it's a minimal word space. And actually, uh, that is a calorie of that. It's very, uh, that's different. It's not helpful for this theory, for this problem, but it's a, it's a very rich story. So the second divider is to use this new structure that you have using rank two vector bundles. So and what is D2? So the D2 is the following D2 is the local. So D2, I mean to the strategy there, yeah, is the locus of curves of the that is thinking that uh, there exists point, three point, X, Y, and Z on C, and a vector bundle, the stable vector bundle, X on C, of rank two, turn. Omega minus the three And it's seven and seven. So, I mean, you may wonder why do I get it? Uh, I tell you, I get the numerology because I want at the end of the day always my curve to lie on some canonical surface. And then you do a lot of experience. What canonical surface do you know in projected space? And uh, I mean, there is people studying that are you know, professionals in this business, but actually, I said not so many. And these are subsections of graph mining, so they are more complicated than the complete intersection. Uh, so why is this play to, 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 to so the claim is that this divisor like this, uh, so this slope is like this is a virtual device, a divisor is in fact to be a device of this. And you think well, the reason why is that you start with uh, E, a bundle with canonical determinant and nice section. As you what I do omega and you look now, you evaluate the sections of three points x, y, z, and you do this over the uh, fiber product of this universal uh, non-abelian broker 
final product of the MC scheme of MC comma three. And the point is now, so this is if I look at the dimensions here, this has the ranks. I mean, this has rank nine. This is five of a vector number of three points, and this is rank six. And I want this evaluation map to be not subjective. So rank five. And if the evaluation map is not subjective, you can actually show immediately that there exists such an F by elementary transformation, which has seven sections and determinant omega minus x minus y minus. Yeah, because the kernel of this is, you know, what is it? E minus. Uh, you know, twisted by minus x minus y minus, but this is not what I want. I want an elementary transformation. So if the rank, if f is not subjective, is not on to, then there exists an f with determinant of f is omega minus x minus y minus e, seven seconds. I mean, how many sections when you do an elementary transformation? What you take generically? I make an elementary transformation of a bundle at three points. I expect to lose one section each time. It's rank two, the Hecke transformation. So I expect to go down to six. Well, I ask to go back to, to, to go down to, to, to five. No, seven. The rank to be six. Uh, seven. Yeah, five. Okay. So the point is that it's, rank, it's called initially rank nine, rank six. It's not projected, it's expected to be co dimensional four. There is a co dimension four locus over this three dimensional moduli space sitting over MCP. So I push it forward to be a divisor. So that this region should be a divisor. And if it is a divisor, then what we can do is the following. So assume now that you granted us the divisor, but you sort of told us the divisor. Uh, and then uh, let's see what we can do with this. So you start now with the point. The sufficient in general point in this divisor. So that, that means that there exists this bundle. Yeah. So there is such a that. And there is a determinant that, right? There is a determinant that is multiply section into the determinant. Of f which is omega of c minus x minus one minus c. But now I can do the following. What does it mean a vector bundle of rank two? It means a map to Grassmann. So I have a map from the c to the Grassmannian g to a zero of f dual. So this I call g like this. This is just g to seven. Now this has a Bluecan embedding. In uh, P of wedge two of the zero at two, which is P twenty. On the other hand, I have the determinant, the dual of the determinant f, and this is mapped to P of any zero of omega c minus x minus y minus c dual maps like this, and this is a P twelve. Okay, so look at this diagram for a second. So what I'm saying is that the current vector is a co-dimension eight linear section of the Grassmann. So it's P line on this thing is like what again S, so this is per definition, the intersection of the Grassmannian with this P twelve. So the dimension of the Grassmannian we have to know. This is 10. So the intersection is expected to be of dimension 10 minus 8 to uh, surface. And furthermore, 
the canonical of the Grassmannian is over minus seven. So all I got assuming if S is known. Omega of S. Oh, minus seven plus eight OS of one. So it's again canonical. So we find another canonical. And only for service. You have to prove this. So you have to prove that you you can find some this 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 uh, contraction can be carried out in full dimension in one or the more life such that the service is good. Uh, and now, of course, when it's canonical, the same argument that I uh, is trying a different context. So <laughs> I write again that it was. But of course, the the, the, the numerology now changes. But what is OC of C? OC of C is omega C minus O of one. So this in this case is X plus Y plus E three points. So this is you know O of three points. So this will move, will not move, but it's like so the point is that again the dimension of OS of E one. I mean this comes from having a canonical set. Yeah, so you, as you know, you cannot put in general a curve of G of G on a, on a circle that it moves because that would contradict that NG is of general power. Yeah? So you have to, this is, and 16 is already high enough, so you have to, to, to you know, there are many uh, failures before you, you, you can leave this one. But in this case, this device now is unique because the construction here will show you that your general point of this device, uh, and in fact, your general point of every component. Because we have not established the reducibility, there is a rational curve. So there is this the gamma two that will lead to a rational curve. So now we have to apply the the, uh, the calculation of the yes. Yeah, so now there is no way that to do the calculation of the of the intersection of this. Yeah. So we already have. So I will now like to uh, intersect this with lambda. And this is chi while it's a formula and it's going over. So that's it. So in this case, we have a zero is still one, a one is zero, it's regular separate, and we are in B12. So a zero h2 is 13. So this is 14, and this times is 14 plus six, 16 minus one is 29. Yes, and the intersection I I'm yeah. I don't know. I have to. Uh, it's uh, again C two, and you have to blow up the base point of the band. And the block, how many base points are there? Are three base points x, y, and z. So this is the blow up of the surface at these three points. Uh, plus four times e minus one. And uh, let's do this calculation again. It's a simple calculation, but for a different surface. Is uh, log the order of C2 of F tilde plus omega S squared. So, what is the intersection of the surface? So, this is the degree of the Grassmannian. The degree of the Grassmannian, anyone? Is a Catalan number, it's G27. Uh, and the degree of the, the Catalan, corresponding Catalan number is 42, but you have to subtract from it 3 because you blow up 3 points. So, this is 42 minus 3, so this is 39. Now, this I already said it is 14. So this C2 it is then uh, 168 minus 39, 129, okay, 129. And then this here is uh, 129 plus 60, 180. Okay. How about we look for linear numbers? So these are the numbers, so now you can do this. And uh, so what is the intersection in the technology? So gamma two k of n t is thirteen uh, lambda minus two delta, which is thirteen times twenty nine minus two times one hundred and eighty. So minus one. So this is victory. Uh, now the problem is. So I am not able to calculate the class of this divided B2. I don't have any idea how to do it. And at this point, I, I think, okay, you, know, you can conclude that uh, victory, but actually, Scott, it was Scott Mullane who pointed out to me that there is still this argument as it is like this. 
we have observed that the collateral dimension of M16 is at most zero. So you put it down to the tab here because you start to write down your divisor as canonical, suppose it's still defective, then you write it down as uh, uh, T2 plus multiple T1 plus some rest. And you intersect with this curve, but you can still not rule out the possibility that this canonical of uh, M16 is just a multiple of T2. This is, you can you still have this. So you still have to do an extra piece of work. This, of course, would imply that the class of D2 is proportional to that of the canonical, which you want to disprove. So the, the last piece of work is that you have to, well, you have to show that it's impossible. So how are you going to do this? You don't know the class of this, but you have a characterization, a geometric characterization of D2. And you have to produce a, a third curve. So you have to produce, for example, a, a family a rational curve. Produce a curve in maybe gamma three inside M16, which intersects K negatively. So this is how we do it. Maybe there are other ways, but it is not in D2. Geometrically, it's not in D2. So necessarily, the intersection in D2 has to be on negative. So that's the contradiction. And for this is uh, well, we use uh, several KP surfaces, and we got KP surfaces of genus two more, two, two less, fourteen. And uh, so this is an immediate calculation. You, you can write on the pencil, and then here you have to do two work. It's a very little theoretical statement uh, established. So I think my time is up. Uh, and uh, so this is how you do it for. So all in all, now you can conclude that. So this last possibility is also rule out. So then. The canonical of M16 is not pseudo effective, not pseudo effective, therefore M16 is uh, real. That's it.